G'day. How is everyone? Excellent. We're going to be discussing Helix and, and uh, Variax and some awesome stuff. These, these guys are all legends. I'm going to get them to start at the end and, and introduce themselves briefly so you can get an idea of uh, the brilliance that's up here, apart from me. I'm just some idiot from Australia. <laughs> Go for it. All right. Uh, Rich Tazzoli. I'm a TV composer, uh, mostly studio work. These are all live boys mostly, but that's what I do. And I use Helix a sh S load. <laughs> I didn't say it. Hi, it's Philip Bino from the Steve Vai Band. <laughs> Steve Vai plays guitar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I taught him a lot. Um, I, I'm John McPhee. I play with uh, a group called the Doobie Brothers, and I do a lot of other things too, but, uh, you know, I'm a dinosaur with one foot in the tar pit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Hi, I'm... Br oh, Jesus. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I'm Brendan Small. I make uh, cartoons and garbage. I wrote a lot of Metallica's music for them. Um, I did... I did a lot of... Uh, I wrote the West Side Story music. So, yeah, maybe we'll kick off. Uh, starting with... How, do, how are you... You said you mentioned you're using Helix uh, in the studio. You use Variax in the studio. What are you using it for? How are you creating stuff? Maybe start with there. Well, I was saying that I use Helix like a sound design tool because I do a lot of um, TV music, like I was saying, and it could be anything from Fox Sports NASCAR, which was last week. So you're going to go to the hard and heavy patches, uh, five, six, and seven, and eight string guitars would be that kind of stuff. And then there's a lot of sound design work, which has boatloads of reverb on it, and I'll use two Eventide H9s in conjunction with Helix, which is an S load of reverb, I'll keep saying that. Yeah. Uh, but it, it works with like something like an Ebo where you're just getting creative. And Helix is, is your sound design tool. Yeah, and you mentioned that when you do crime shows, you use different chords when people are dead. <laughs> that is correct. I see my friends I, pl out I there. played on a dead <laughs> album. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, but it's resolution, isn't it? It's like... It's that's I'm not making that up. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. absolutely true. I know what's, how what's to. I know how to kill many ways legally. I, I want to know. I want to know the dead cord. I, I'll let you know later. Okay, all right, <laughs> fair. And uh, yeah, how, how are you using it for? You're using it live, obviously. Uh, maybe go through your setup if you could, Philip. Well, the way I use it is I um, use the Helix in stereo, <laughs> and the big, really cool thing is I have you know two rigs, so everything's coming out in stereo. It comes out stereo in my in ears, comes in stereo out of the monitors, and out of front of house. I bypass the preamps on my amplifiers and all of my EQ sounds, everything is done on that because when we go overseas and play, a lot of times we don't take gear because it's too expensive to bring amps and all that stuff overseas. So I'll just take my bass and my Helix and then I run whatever rig they give me, I bypass the preamp so my bass sound is always the same no matter what venue I'm in and if anything has to be changed on anything, I do it right there and it's, it changes everywhere so that there's no, um, you know, the bass is on me. I, I have control over what it sounds like in the monitors, what it sounds like coming out of the amp, no matter what the amp is. If they give me a, you know, a different kind of amp, I can go on the amps on here and, and find my, my sound, either using the SVT or the, or the um, now they have an Aguilar amp in there, which is what kind of amp that I use. They have a, about eight or nine different bass amps on there, so I can always have my tone that I like coming out of my rig out of front of house and there's never any problem for that. You said something cool before. You said, you know, if something goes wrong, you want to be able to problem solve and get it done instead of point to the person at the back. Uh, as I said, as a live performer, you know, no matter how big the person is you're working with, for me, it comes down to me. If I'm playing bass, I have to be able to, to know my rig and know how to troubleshoot right away. So if I plug it in and it doesn't work, I, I can't look to my bass roadie. A lot of, it's great when you have a bass tech that's, that knows your rig as well as you do, but for me, if something is not working, I can immediately troubleshoot it on, on the go and make it so that it's seamless. When I'm working with Steve, Steve is very much, your, if you're the bass player, know the bass rig, know the, whole, know the bass parts, do the whole thing. Um, so I mean, on, on, some of the, on some of the gigs we'll go and we don't get to carry crew, so I'll go there, set up, the, I don't set up the amps, I mean, it's not that bad, but, <laughs> um, but as far as doing the wiring, if something is, is not correct, I'm not going to turn to the guy who's never seen my rig and go, fix it, I have to be able to fix it and make it so that it's seamless, so having the, the ability to, 
to work with these things so quickly and so easily is what's really important to me. That's, that's a good thing. How about you? What, what, what are you running? I was going to say something about what Philip was saying. One of the things about the Helix is the interface is really so well thought out and so intuitive. It would make it easier to make your adjustments. I mean, than any other piece of gear I've ever used, uh, just to really get in deep with it and all the parameters. It's it's a it's a great interface, and I use uh, I use a, a play a Variax standard currently um, on my touring work and uh, through a Helix, and with the Doobie Brothers, I don't I haven't used an amplifier in years. I just I just take the stereo out directly from uh, the, the Helix and it sounds great and I, I took uh, Ross Hogarth Grammy Award winning engineer came up to my studio we put up multi-track live Doobie Brothers stuff and I tweaked my sounds in the studio to make it um, appropriate and, and uh, in context and that kind of thing is I think uh, a useful approach but even, even if you can't do that I mean it's uh, again, I've been so impressed since I uh, got the Helix when they first came out. It's been, it's made a big difference because it's, it really sounds great. And, and, and you've got so about like so five instruments plugged into it at once, don't you? That's true. Besides my guitar, thank you for reminding me of that. You know, I, I use the uh, digital cable for that. So I'm going into the very axe input of the Helix for my guitar. However, uh, I also play pedal steel and I take that into the guitar input. And I just finished doing some touring with Timothy B. Schmidt, where I'm, I also ran my violin <laughs> through the aux input. So all of my uh, various instruments were coming out of one source, which makes it you know, a lot easier for the front of house guy. Yeah, and Philip, you mentioned you have cello. You, you play cello? Uh, yes, on yeah. a song or two. So again, same thing. I, I go through, I guess you'd call it the scenes, and I have all of my presets, and I'll have a preset just for cello, so I can pull up. I go to the cello, I push the thing. I'm sure there's a better way to say that, but, you know. <laughs> and then all of my, the, the preamp changes, all the, um, the effects change, and I can go through and do that thing. Then I'm going to go back to electric bass, hit the thing, do the thing, press the thing, and there it is back again. And is there a better word I can use than thing? I like it. I okay. think thing's cool. <laughs> so that's how I'll, I'll go through a similar situation like, like John. I don't have them all plugged in at once, but I'll, so I'll pull the volume pedal back pull the, um, the cord out of my Line 6 wireless that I use, yep. which we can talk about, and then plug the different bass in up by the cello and whatever it is and bring the volume pedal down, change the, um, the thing, yep. and go about my business. Awesome. How are you using it? How am I using it? I have, I've used a lot of different... I've done a lot of uh, cool stuff um, where I will... If I like an amp and I just want to hear that sound, I'll put the effects of this in the effects loop. So I can put all my delays and reverbs and control them with the, like use the volume pedal as an expression pedal if I want to. Another cool thing that I like about the Helix is that if I have a favorite pedal, like an analog pedal that I really like a lot, I can put that in the loop also and I can have it on all the time and this can trigger it when it goes on or off live. So that's kind of a cool thing that you can do. Where do you tend to, because you can route the effects loop in your signal chain too. So where do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do I do that? I, I mean, mean well, you just hit the... Uh, I mean, without going too far into depth. You just hit the thing and okay, uh, okay. That, then move that other thing and then it does it. But what I like is that, and if I want to like, just drop and go and record very quickly, I have a lot of IRs that I've put into this thing too, which make a lot of... It really helps you sculpt your, the sound you want to hear. So you, for, oh, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. some folks might not know what an IR is. An IR is an impulse response, so it, it, in one way or another, it digitally mimics the speaker and the, the kind of microphone and the distance between the speaker and the microphone and where on the speaker you're miking and stuff. But, you can, but I don't go that far into it. I usually just keep scrolling until I find something that I like that sounds like the kind of sound I need. Like if I need a gainy guitar, if I want something with kind of a compressed feel for like metal rhythms and stuff like that, I will dial that kind of a thing in. So I'll, I'll use it for that kind of a thing. Um, I'll use it for effects alone sometimes in a live situation. And, um, and then something else I really like to do with the Helix is I like to plug it in stereo in my studio and I like to take two different amps out at the same time that kind of 
maybe sometimes contradict each other, or sometimes uh, maybe one's more of a tube screamery kind of like uh, nice compressed kind of with no amp in front of it even. I'll just put that by itself just to hear that on one side, and then I'll put something maybe like uh, something close to like a modern high gain amp on the right side, and then I'll have delays kind of bounce back and forth sometimes and get a lot of cool stuff. I've also I use this on my most recent record Galacticon 2, where I used um, I put kind of like a uh, a slicer pedal, which is like panning back and forth hard. And I get this really cool square wave Michael Mann kind of tangerine dream sound on a guitar, which is pretty badass. Anytime you can make your guitar not sound like a guitar, it's pretty amazing. Um, and then I recorded, uh, I've been working on a record with uh, Scott Ian and Brian Posehn where I just dropped this thing and I said, let's do the whole thing with the Helix. I want to put it through its paces and I want to make sure it sounds cool and heavy and, and can can stand up against amplifiers and all that stuff. And that's what I'll say, my compliment is that it can be very amp-like. Um, and I'm sick of listening to myself. How about you folks? No, I was loving all of that. Uh, but I was going to say, Richie, you, you, on that amp thing that Brendan was saying, you do something similar w with the panning and all that you, you mentioned earlier. What, talk about that maybe. One thing I'll say that I do, when we were just talking about going into the studio, and t for me to get the, the huge guitar sounds, I will generally go into my Mesa Boogie Mark IV or any of my other amps and I'll pan that left and then I'll use Helix on the right. Uh, so I'll use a combination of real amps and Helix and the reason I use Helix is because it's brighter than any, it, it, obviously you don't have to take the time to mic your amp up or everything, but Helix is a nice bright clean sound and then you get the thick sound. It's almost like having two microphones but then you get double, triple and quad, I generally quadruple track my parts so, because bigger is better in television land. Yeah, so awesome. it's true. And I use Workbench, which, which means, like, I used a Strat and a Tele on the same session last week. Uh, left, Strat left, Tele right, but I was using my Variax guitar. So yeah. I didn't have, I actually sold off my Strat because I don't need it anymore, and that's not, that's actually true. That's awesome. Yeah. Maybe for some folks who don't know what Workbench is, do you want to give a quick rundown? Well, Workbench lets me change the pickups. Literally, I used a Strat, a Tele Custom, so I used the neck position pickup, which I changed the, the tone on and the potentiometer values. This is it gets a little geeky, but it's okay. So you're you're getting in and tweaking the pickups I of do. the model. I do in the workbench yeah. software. And you know, I was like, that's perfect. You and know? how much is the workbench software? You tell me. It's free. Oh, there you go. <laughs> wow. What? <laughs> it's the best price ever. You say free? Free. <laughs> it really works. It lets you tweak your guitars to King and Come or not. You don't even have to open Workbench if you choose not to. But that's where I use 12 strings and 6 strings. And we were talking about, you have a real sitar, right? Yeah, I was, it's a good we story. were talking a little bit earlier. And I mentioned the fact that I, I still have an original choral electric sitar, you know, psychedelic relic instrument. But the... The uh, Variax version of, a, of an electric sitar is actually a better sounding <laughs> uh, electric sitar than the real thing. And it stays in tune, like I was saying. It does. You can actually tune it. Y you were saying also uh, earlier that you tend to mess with your uh, tuning and all that stuff in Helix as opposed to Workbench. That's another way to do it. Yeah. With the previous versions of Variax, you kind of had to go in with Workbench to, to do that kind of work. Uh, tuning modification, making custom tunings, but with the newer Variax controlled by the Helix, you can make up a preset and just and totally make up whatever tuning you want per song and or per setting, you know, yeah. per preset. And that must be convenient when you're scoring for TV. It's and quick and easy. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll interview you now because I thought, I thought what was fascinating is you, because we think of Helix as a guitar processor plug-in, but the bass I have to record bass too because I'm a one-man shop most of the time. So I plug in and go bass. But I think it's amazing that you go on the road and you don't even have a... You're, you're carrying your Helix. You're yeah, flying with it as, for, as a bass player. That's pretty cool. I actually have a bag that I can get it in the overhead because I've taken those trips, which some of you may have, where you go overseas and you get to the, the luggage thing and it's just going around and your heart starts going faster and <laughs> yeah. faster because your bag is not going to show up. I had a bass disappear for three days, and I'm not allowed in China anymore, I don't think, because of the way I spoke to Air China. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I think what's important to talk about is something, how fast you can work with this, because th this is true. Like last week, I went from Fox NASCAR on the super heavy presets, and literally 
take go get a seltzer and move into Duck Dynasty or something. And like you have to, your brain has to switch, and you you switch your sounds from distorted to clean. Do you use the banjo model for I Duck do. Dynasty? I do. Have I you found that you find your relatives more attractive when you? <laughs> About those Mets. How are the Mets doing this year? Um, yeah, actually, maybe it's time to field some questions. Ah. G'day, yes. Uh, you're putting the helix through its paces. What's the usual signal chain? Well, it's, it's really simple in this case. So with, um, I worked with Jay Rustin, who's done a lot of stuff, you know, from Anthrax and all kinds of, uh, tons of bands and stuff. But he, uh, we just plug it straight in. So I put this probably um, through from here to like maybe my stereo APIs and from that right into my Pro Tools rig. So that's what I did. I didn't even, I, it was all analog. What I'll usually do is I'll just dial something in and I'll go maybe something that's like some modern high gain, like something closer to like a Marshall, like a modern Marshall or something like that is usually what I gravitate towards. And then I'll just make sure like the gain works that I can hear that. And then when you're recording metal rhythm guitars, you don't want to have it so gainy that it's spilling over the sides. You actually want to back up your gain a little bit and hopefully play in time. And once you do left and right, and maybe down the center if you're you, or and maybe another one somewhere else in 5.1 land, I don't know. What I wanted to do was I just put out a comic book that is called Galacticon. It's, it's telling the story of the first Galacticon record I put. And it's, it's, a, it's a really fun comic book and I have one of the robots in in the in the comic book and it was funny I was having a conversation with the publisher this guy Eric Powell who does a comic called The Goon that's really cool also and we were and I was writing in my script I was writing like beep boop bop how does and and he, we had a conversation on the phone and we he said how do you hear this robot speaking and I go honestly to me it sounds like a combination of like R2D2 and Steve Vai and um, and he goes what if we what if his dialogue was guitar, what if it was guitar tablature? And I was like, that's a, I've never seen that before, and that's enough reason for me to want to do it. So I sat down with my Helix, and I, I preset it like a small speaker with like a whammy kind of a thing and a wah thing going on at the same time. And I had a whammy bar on my guitar, and I just found this, the craziest, strangest, raspy-throated, weird voice that if you buy the comic book, you look on the first page, I tell you the ingredients you need to be able to play along with the comic book. But yeah, so that's what I did. Thank you. Please Someone remain else? seated. Thanks. Uh, my question is for John. John, you play with uh, two other guitar players, and they are uh, both using amps. Is there a mm. sonic right. challenge? Uh, are you competing with them? Or are they competing with you? Oh, it's not even close. Oh, wait, let's see. Um, <clears throat> no, it's, it's uh, you know, I, one, one thing about guitar and getting guitar sounds uh, is that there's not just one right way or one good sound or something. There's so many ways to, to arrive at something that works. Those guys, Pat, Pat Simmons and Tom Johnston, is who you're talking about, uh, they have their preferences. Their, their rigs are totally different from each other as well. But... Uh, in my case, I gravitated towards this technology. And for one example, uh, we were talking about earlier too, a song like Listen to the Music. On that song, I'm playing an acoustic guitar part. On the choruses, it's a banjo. There was banjo on the original recording. And I also play a, some, a, some lead lines with distorted electric guitar lead. And there's no other combination of gear, I think, that I could possibly be accomplishing that with. So I, I need it for what I do. For my role in the band, it, it's, it's really actually essential. Guitarists evolve, and we get into our, the things that we rely on. And in my case, I, I have to have this. So it's a little different than for Pat and Tom. Uh, hey guys, um, I asked Stevic this question yesterday. It might be a question that people don't have an answer to, but uh, right now I'm designing backtracks using Helix Native through Ableton. And I'm wondering if anyone's ever uh, automated Helix Native patches into a live DAW and how you might have had any experience with doing that. I have not. I haven't done that either. It, it sounds too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just thought I'd ask because Helix Native is pretty new and I want to be able to run backtracks. I've, I've, I've used Helix Native a little bit, but I haven't really automated it uh, in, in the sense I think that you're talking about. I'd probably gravitate towards a Helix and send the MIDI control signals from Ableton to the Helix. So it's just sending the MIDI, but the hardware is handling the guitar processing so the backing track could be handled through the Ableton platform. 
that's probably how I would do it because, like I said the other day, I freak out when I have, you know, even though I use all this stuff, um, having a laptop is just a, a little bit of a liability for me, but maybe that there's probably someone who's doing what you're exactly what you're talking Maybe you are the guy. Okay, thanks, yeah, guys. no worries. You know, I'll bring up something because, Brenny, you were saying what if, right? Yeah. And, and to me, that's the beautiful thing about Helix and Avariax is what if I dropped a 12-string to low B or I detuned the entire thing and then stuck it into gobs of reverb, yeah. right? That Helix lets you do what if and it lets you go places that you can't do. I have a lot of great guitars, but I use Variax quite a bit because it offers things that you can what if quickly with. Yeah, I think, and, and you know, you guys have touched on it. They're, they're tools. Like, these are all just tools that you can use to do whatever it is that you do. And you can, like, we're all using it so differently. Uh, it's fascinating to me to hear, you know, guys of this caliber um, using this stuff in completely different ways to how I would use it. And, you know, I'm getting tips. I'm going, that's cool. I might try that. You know, so I, I don't think there's a hard and fast thing and it's about the output and the creativity and if you want to be a, a killer guitar player um, you have to you, you have to do what um, Brendan said you actually have to practice and <laughs> yeah, you know, it's true get good you know uh, I was chatting to uh, John about it if you're running an acoustic or a sitar uh, or any of the kind of more acoustic style instruments you always run it into a mic pre model versus like a Marshall stack or something unless you want that cake kind of like acoustic unless you sound. want a what if version yeah, unless, you want, unless you want that I'm playing an acoustic guitar through a, a, an electric guitar amplifier sound but building your sounds in, in an environment that is going to reflect where you're performing those sounds is super important um, so many people come up to me and say the Helix sounds crap and I'm like what are you plugging into and they're like I've got this little orange thing and a banana and I just stick the cable in I'm like no wonder you need to get away from sticking it in fruit and move to an output source indicative of where you perform. And practice. And practice. Yes. I'm like the whiplash guy. Not my tempo. That was bad American accent. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah. It was good. It was good. You should hear my Australian accent. Do it. No. <laughs> no. no. See, I want to I quickly teach everyone. When you want to say yes, you go... Oi. Oh, that's like oh, yes, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Ask me a question. How hey. are you? Oh, <laughs> we don't even say words. Anyway, on that note, on that I, note, I think we better wrap it up. So please give it up for these legends, and thank you. Thank you.